Hey, it's your main man, Salvador. Uh, I've been excited about this episode for a long time. It's, it's really my chance to share with you uh, the methodology that I use um, to really get on track to retire early, stay on track and stay focused. And I call this method the, the SUBS method. But we'll get into that in a second. Uh, but, you know, I want to take you back and, and just walk you through a little bit of what got me to this point uh, today. Um, so back in 2009, uh, my father had a stroke and he was in a rehab hospital. And there's two questions he asked me because when I showed up, he was surprised. He didn't expect me to be there. So the first question he asked me is, what are you doing here? And if you knew my father, you knew that's the qu first question he's going to ask. The second question he asked me was, what did you eat for breakfast today? And I told him, dad, I don't eat breakfast. I don't think I've eaten breakfast consistently for the 52 years that I've been alive. But I said, I don't eat breakfast today. He says, why not? I said, because I've never eaten breakfast. To, and I've never eaten breakfast. And so he said, well, just because you've never done it in the past doesn't mean you can't start. And, you know, it's funny because that really triggered me to think about if I want a different outcome in my life, then I got to do some things different. And so just to go back and frame up 2009, you know, in 2009, I was previously married in a very, very toxic uh, relationship. Um, I, I, was, I was spending more than I than I made. Um, I couldn't do right for anything. It was it was just a bad a bad match, uh, a match made in hell, if you will. And and many of us have experienced that. And and, and I'd, I'd be interested to hear how that's affected your life uh, in the comments below. But anyway, um, I made more than I, I was spending more than I made. I wasn't making a lot by any means. Uh, I lived in a house that I, I couldn't afford, which is easy to do in California. And you know, I associated with a lot of people that um, that took more than they gave, and it's it's interesting because I as I as I started to think about where I was at the time, I knew at that moment after having that conversation with my dad and understanding what the eventual outcome could be, which it did. So I, I you know, it's uh, may rest in peace. But um, it told me that I need to do something different. If I want a different outcome, then I need to change what I'm doing now because if I keep doing what I'm doing now, I'm going to end up broke, unhappy, and with a bunch of issues. Um, and so it made me start to think about if I'm going to change my life, where what are the buckets? Where do I? What are the things that I'm going to change? Where where am I going to start? And I think many of us out there, many of you out there, are thinking the same thing. You're looking at me saying, "Hey, Sabado, you know this retirement thing is great." But, you know, I've got a life, I've got a house, I got kids, I'm married, I got this, that, and the other, and blah, 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 and blue, diddy, blue, diddy, blue. But the fact of the matter is, is that you have to draw a line in the sand, or as I used to say, a line in the shit, because that's where it was at that time for me. Uh, but you have to draw a line in the sand. And so what I did was, and my methodology was, I broke my life into three categories. It's people, places, and things. And so if I knew that I want if I knew that if I want to get to a place that was different than where I was because remember back in 2009 the idea of retirement for many of you or like many of you was a distant memory or a distant it was it was so not a distant memory but it was so far out there that it wasn't even a reality so I would dismiss it so if I saw Salvador back in 2009 I would look at him the same way that you some of you were looking at me saying you know what I just can't do it bro so that's what it is but I knew I had to do something. And so what I did is I broke things down into people, places, and things. And I, I, I thought to myself, you know, when you try to do something great, you know, when you, when, you, when you start looking at people, you know, a lot of the people that love you or that are closest to you, they're going to try to dissuade you from what it is you're trying to do. They're going to they're gonna they're gonna tell you that it's not possible. There's no way you can retire. There's no way you can do this. There's no way you can do that. Um, and you have to you have to move those people out. Um, then there's there and, and and what you start to find is a lot of those folks. What they're doing is they don't think it's impossible for you to meet your goal. The fact is is they're living their own internalized reality through you. So you know they say you know we look at movie stars and we want to live vicariously through them. Well, sometimes what people do is they project, and I think in psychological circles they talk about the idea of projecting. They're projecting their ideas onto you, and um, and it's 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 funny because they're not focused on you being the best you, and so 
and 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 they don't make you a priority. And so if you they'll, they'll tell you that things aren't good, and then they don't make you a priority. And then when things go good, they go right back into the loop. So it's like a rec a broken record. It plays, you hear that pop, then it goes back. And you hear that pop, it goes right back. It goes in that loop. It's a broken loop. And then when you start looking at places, you know, think about how many places you go that uh, don't bring you joy. You just go out of obligation. You know, I, one of the things that I used to love when I was a kid, I used to love house parties. Now you can catch me in a house party and my life depending on it. I'm just not into that. I'm not into large groups of people that I don't know. Now, close friends, people I care about, people I love, people that love me all day, every day. But people that I don't know and that aren't necessarily out for my best interest, I don't have time for it. But how many of the places do we go or how many of the places do you go where when you think back, you say, you know, I could have lived the full life without being there. Well, that takes away some of the focus from some of your goals. Um, you know, and, and sometimes we end up taking these trips. You know, we'll go to Las Vegas or we'll go to Miami Beach or we'll go over to Tahiti or we'll do some crazy stuff just to create a distraction. So we're not even enjoying the place that we're at. We're just creating a distraction because we want to not think about what's going on today because we're so we're so uh, steeped in the mire of what's going on in our day-to-day -day lives that we don't want to deal with that. So we create that distraction. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you go places that, that distract you so much that you don't focus on the loves and passions that you have because you almost want to just take your mind away. You know, I think the old Calgon commercial, you say, Calgon, take me away. It's the same thing. And so you end up going places that add no value to you because you're getting taken away, not just from the, the stuff that you don't want to deal with. In a lot of cases, the stuff that you want to do, or you're not, you're not you're focusing on the stuff that it is that you want to do. And then when you start looking at some of the things and how those can impact your focus is, you know, so a lot of times, you know, these things create financial hardship. Um, and and my, my rule of thumb is if I need a credit card in order to pay for something, I can't afford it. If you need a credit card in order to pay for something, you can't afford it. Now, I get it. Houses and cars, that's one thing. But flashy cars, expensive clothes, or flashy jewelry, those are things that aren't out of necessity. Those are things because you're trying to communicate a message to somebody else about what your value is. And you're telling them, you should value me this much because I have this. Now, I'm not talking about, I think it's great. People should buy nice things if they can afford it. If you can afford a nice watch, nothing wrong with buying a nice watch. If you can afford to wear nice designer clothes, by all means, go out and do it. But if you have to use a credit card to pay for them, fact, you can't afford it. Because if you could, you'd go to the ATM or you'd reach in your pocket, your wallet, your purse, and you'd go pay for it. And so what that does, though, is that ends up taking focus off of what it is that you're trying to do. Because at some point, you're going to have to come back and pay the reaper. Um, you know, and, and these things, they add no objective value. So if you if you take a, those things, those inanimate objects, the only value they have is the value that you assign to them. And if you use those as a value to say, hey, I'm cool because I got the new Maserati, then you got a problem, bro, or bro at as it were. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that when I started to look at people, places and things, um, I didn't want I got tired of buying nice things to be a status symbol to show people I belong. You know, I'll tell you a funny story in an offhand, uh, in a, in a, on a side note. I had a neighbor, I, I used to have a nice car. I had this Audi S6. And so when I knew that I was getting close to retiring, I said, you know, I don't want to pay $2,000 every time I take my car to the shop. It was paid off and everything, but it was $2,500 $2, every time I took it to the shop. So I sold it and bought myself a Volkswagen. And it's funny because when I did that, my other neighbor bought a, went out and bought a BMW. And I knew that I was making more money than this guy. And so he goes out and buys a BMW and I tell him, I say, Hey man, you know, that's a nice car that you buy. He's like, Oh man, that's great. I like that car. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And then I said, I said, yeah. I said, you know, it's funny. I said, I just sold my Audi. He's like, what? You sold your Audi? I said, yeah. He said, well, you're no longer the guy in the neighborhood with the cool car. And it's funny because at the end of the day, I thought to myself, 
we've never focused on keeping up with the Joneses, but maybe because we focus on buying the things that we can afford, we were the Joneses and other people that couldn't afford it looked up to us. But you don't want to fall into that trap. Don't try to be like anybody else because the reality is you can only be a, a second rate them, but you can always be a first rate you. So anyway, I digress. And so when you when you think about where you focus, your focus should be on some on some very key areas. Um, you know, number one, living below your means. You should always try to live below your means because you've got to pay yourself first. First, you got to do your savings account. Then you've got to do your retirement accounts or vice versa. And then you got to have your emergency fund. So your emergency fund shouldn't be your normal savings. Your emergency fund should be, hey, if we go to hell in a handbasket, I lose my job, there's a medical expense or something like that. I was, I was reading a newspaper the other day and there was some story in there that said about 80% of people couldn't handle a, 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 a surprise $1,000 uh, medical bill. And so what does that tell you? So what you've done is you've, if, if you're not doing that, you've prioritized all of this unnecessary, inanimate, non-valuable stuff over your own health. Um, so live below your means. Pay yourself first. Um, only spend time with people that prioritize you and your feelings. Not people that placate you. Not people that just allow you to exist. But people that prioritize you. People that tell you and help you understand that even in your darkest moment, that your light is still shining bright. You shouldn't hang out with people where you feel lucky to be around them. Because the fact of the matter is, they should all feel lucky to be around you. You know, I have a group of friends of mine, and we go on these trips and stuff from time to time. And it's interesting because the one thing that we've always done, we've always done this since we were younger, I never worried about myself because I knew that one of my buddies was thinking about me. And then he was never thinking about himself because he knew one of our other buddies were thinking about him. And if you go around all that circle, everybody's covered. Not because the buck stops at one person and one person is taking care of everybody, but because everybody's taking care of everybody else. That's the way it's supposed to be. You put yourself around that, you start to find that greatness that you're looking for. Um, only purchase items that bring you value. And I mean real value. And, and you know, it's not all, value is not all dollars and cents. It's easy to get on these retirement channels and everybody talks about dollars and cents and all that. You know, peace of mind is valuable. Um, one of the things that we pay for is we have a person that comes in and does a deep cleaning of our house every couple of weeks. And that time is time that my wife and I use to go and do something else. And that time that I spend with my wife is incredibly valuable. Um, there's things that, that you know, there's a necklace that she that she bought me when we first dated. And it's, it's a really nice necklace. It's not a gold necklace, just a little silver dog chain. But it's funny because if, if, if I were in a bus accident and it blew off my face and shattered all of my teeth and they didn't have dental records to identify me, the first thing she would say is, is he wearing the dog chain? Doesn't have my name or anything on it, but how many six foot eight black dudes you think are sitting around with a, with a, a, a Tiffany um, dog chain around their neck uh, of, of sterling silver? Not many. And so, and, and I think she bought it on sale. Just kidding. I don't know that for sure, but if she did, I think that's great. It's why I married her. It's why I love her so much. But anyway, uh, but only purchase things that have real value. You know, buying things that have value to other people, forget about them. Think about yourself. You owe it to yourself. Don't try to impress people. Impress yourself. Take care of yourself. Do things that are of value to yourself, that are going to bring you more time, that are going to bring you more health, that are going to bring you more intrinsic happiness uh, because things, they go away. The next one, prioritize your time. You know, it's funny I made a, I made another visit, uh, a video uh, a few weeks ago, and I talk about Kaiser Sorce, and he says the biggest trick that the devil ever played was convincing the world that he didn't exist. And you know, it's funny because that happens every day. We get so caught into going to work that we forget that our time is so valuable that multinational corporations who don't give a damn about humans are paying you for that time. Let that sink in for a second. And so, and they're telling you what to do with your time. You wake up in the morning and you want to go watch Barney and Friends, but you can't because you got to go help somebody else meet their goals. Why? Because they're telling you how to live your life. 
And so what happens is over time, we become conditioned. We become institutionalized with work and we forget that our time is valuable. Our time is so valuable that they give us enough money to buy houses. They give us enough money to buy cars. They give us enough money to buy drugs in some cases. They give us money to, to distract ourselves from the fact that our time really is valuable. So prioritize your time. Uh, next, be ready to turn corners. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's my boss. I, I had a boss one time, a guy named Herb. Herb told me, he says, you know, the person that you come with isn't necessarily the person that you leave with. You know, I know it's not politically correct, but I, like I said, I keep it real and, and I'm not going to always be politically correct, but I'm always going to keep it real with you. And the fact of the matter is, is sometimes you have friends that helped you get to a point and sometimes you have to let those friends go because you've turned that corner. Because, and, and, and here's the reality of it. There's a lot of people that we've all known for a long time and we've known them for a long time and they helped us get to where we are. But then we outgrow those folks and we hold on to them out of a sense of obligation to them. But here's the problem with that is if you people, there is no way that a person can help you stay at the status quo. There's no way that a person just sits at the status quo. They're either doing one of two things. They're either helping you grow and move forward in your life or they're holding you back. Think about the time you have wanted to take the new job and somebody says, well, no, because that's going to take you away from me. Think about the time you wanted to do something that was going to further your career or further your level of happiness and somebody else is saying, I don't want you to do that. So so here you are uh, on, on the way to have a higher state of being, higher level of consciousness, higher peace of mind. When somebody says, well, because it doesn't work for me, I don't want you to do it. Those people need to go because those people are trying, are using you to meet their needs. They're not worried about you. And remember, you only want to be around people that prioritize your time and make you a priority and want to see you grow forward. I can guarantee, I can tell you right now that every single close friend that I have, if I called them right now and said, I need you to help me with something because mentally, emotionally, physically, I have something going on. They may not be able to do it at the exact time because of things, right? I get it. There's people have things they have to do. But, in it, but what's going to weigh on them is I want to help my friend Salvador. It is very important that Salvador called on me and I need Salvador's help. And the one thing that people know about me, I'm not known. You're, you're probably no surprise anybody. I'm not known as the, as, the, uh, as the purveyor of love and happiness in all situations and always smiles. I'm not that guy. But if somebody calls me and they need my help, they know I'm Johnny on the spot. And I'm not just going to be there. I'm going to be there early. Am I going to be there early because I want to be there early? Not necessarily. I'm going to be there early because if I consider you a friend, then that's where I'm going to be. I like to say, you know, the thing I always say, it's kind of a joke, and I'll, I'll get back on track here in a second, is that if I care enough about you to answer the question, then it's always going to be the truth, 100%. That's how it goes. So, and then the last one is hold yourself accountable. You know, it's, it's easy for us, you know, the eyes point out, voices project out, and it's easy to tell other people what they, what, what they should be doing. But at the end of the day, it's important for you to get your kids out the street. You know, make sure your house is clean before you come over to my house telling me what to do. And so, at the, so, so, but, so, so hold yourself accountable. Um, it doesn't mean you have to go out and tell your business and tell people what you did and, and, and admit all of your faults because, you know, we're all flawed. But, and, and I know, you know, I, I think that we all make mistakes and, and none of us are perfect. And I think you have to allow yourself some grace for yourself and, and, and be gentle on yourself and, and understand that sometimes you're going to screw up. Or as they say, sometimes you're going to screw the pooch. Although I don't screw pooches, but it's a joke. Uh, yeah, I know it was bad. Sorry, YouTube algorithm. But anyway, you know, but be gentle on yourself, but hold yourself accountable. If you're going to do something, do it. You know, a lot of you out there are, are looking at me as kind of this guy that that made it. You know, I had one guy tell me I was part of the 0.0001%. 
um, because I, I was able to retire at 51. But it's not because I just got lucky and, and fell in retirement. It's because I made some very conscious decisions doing the exact things that I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, living below my means, uh, making sure I had the right people in my life that prioritized my feelings, um, all we focus on bringing things that, that add value. And, and what, one of the proof of concept of that is that, you know, I only wear about five t-shirts I've talked about in the video. If you watch my videos, you see the videos, you know, subscribe to the channel and you will see that most of my videos, I'm wearing some of the same t-shirts. I have the same types of backgrounds in my videos because again, the value is in the game that I'm lacing you up with and not trying to look flashy and be like this YouTube sensation. Because the fact is, I'm not trying to be a YouTube sensation. I'm trying to help you out. Or as Jay-Z said, you know, y'all think it's bougie. I'm like, it's fine, but I'm trying to give you a million dollars worth of game for $9.99. So anyway, um, and then, you know, people that, and, and, you know, if you, I, I prioritize my time um, and, I, and I had to make, you know, people that know me know that if, if, it, if the waters get too rough, I'm out. And not because something's difficult, but because if I feel like you're um, you're disrespecting or that you're not prioritizing me as a friend or somebody that you care about, then I'm not going to allow myself to get that close because I don't want that pain and all that suffering. Um, and then uh, and I hold myself accountable. I hold myself to a higher standard than everyone else, than anybody else I know. I don't hold anybody to that. It's funny because my, my wife and I get into conversations sometimes about things that happen. And the one thing she says is I say, you know, I wouldn't do that. And she says, you know, Sabado. Not everybody's you. It's because I hold my health to, myself to such a high standard. But you know what that did? You know what that did? That made me one of the 18%. By holding myself to all of these strict standards, it made me part of the 18%. I made some tough decisions. I had some tough, I had a tough road to hoe in certain things. Um, I had to make some, some very, very drastic changes. Um, but now I'm sitting in a place where I'm 52, I'm retired. I'm married to the love of my life, my best friend. I enjoy my life. I have, you know, I have over 125 people in the rest of the world that that think that something I'm saying is making sense and and are subscribing to the channel, um, and and continuing to grow. And so, and I, I've I've got, the, I have the opportunity to to help people um, uh, realize their dreams through my journey. I mean, so at, at the end of the day, that's what happens when you hold yourself accountable. So, you know, and, and just make sure you always understand, you know, you know, life is, life is long. And, you know, we think, you know, we can only, we only know what's happened up to this point. And, you know, not to get all political on everybody because I, you know, the times aren't right. And, you know, people have a bunch of feelings about different things and I'm not going down that path. But Barack Obama once said that, you know, Today is the result of everything that's ever happened in the world in the past, and tomorrow will be the result of what happens today. And so you have the opportunity to change it today. And today I wanted I wanted to help you understand my SUBS uh, methodology. And so I, I promised you at the end that I would, if you stay to the end, you'd know what the SUBS methodology stood for. And it's stay out of the bullshit, stay out of the BS. And so if you stay out of the BS you and you, 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 you focus on people, places, and things, you're going to end up where it is that you need to end up because the rest of the pieces, they're easy to figure out. So on that note, I'm going to let you go. I know it's been about 24 minutes, but again, thank you for your time and I will talk to you soon.